What's going on everyone? Jim here, RCAD. Got a little unboxing for y'all today on the Hoina, Hoina, Waina, whatever, excavator. Unboxing our yellow bucket. Ripper fork, or ripper claw. And the quick detach attachment. I went ahead and already removed my stock bucket off of the 580. So looking at the yellow aftermarket bucket. Let's get a close look at it. Nice looking bucket. No lies on descriptions or anything like that. No false advertising. They give you all the measurements when you look at this bucket for sale on various websites, not just Extreme RC. Sorry about the flash. Uh, relatively good quality. It is all steel. Only complaints that I have about this bucket right off the bat is that they just spot welded things together. So there's like a little spot weld here, another spot weld, another spot weld, another spot weld, another spot weld. Uh, so they just kind of spot welded this thing together. And if you look really close, you can see through the gaps, like on the inside of the bucket, and where they welded the connection point in on top. You can see daylight through the gaps on some of these connection points. So that's one thing that I kind of don't necessarily care for. They could have did a little bit better job welding this up. Uh, like a traditional bead all the way around the edge, inner and outer. And a full bead going around the edge of the bucket instead of these little tack welds. Cutting teeth, relatively sharp. Metal, all steel. Well, not necessarily steel, not too sure if it's steel or not. Uh, definitely metal, it is magnetic. So all metal there. As far as longevity, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, the little cutting edges here seem a little bit on the thin side, but we'll see how long they last. Taking a look at our stock 580 bucket right off the bat. No complaints about this bucket whatsoever. Decent size, all one piece cast. Teeth not quite as sharp as the yellow bucket. Cutting edges pretty much non-existent on this bucket. But you could come through here with a grinder or a file and file these teeth down and make them a little bit sharper. Same with the cutting edges. You could put a little bit of an edge on there uh, very carefully. Once again, it's cast. So you'd have to be real careful about that. Overall size. Now, here we go looking at the size of the two. We can fit the yellow bucket right inside our stock 580 bucket. So that kind of tells you a little something about that. Overall depth, I've heard that this one was deeper than the 580 bucket, but no. Nope, they're pretty much the same on depth overall. Line them up. Pretty much the same. Only difference is if someone was measuring it depth-wise. 580 bucket has a curve on here, a little radius. Aftermarket bucket has a straight edge. So that straight edge is going to throw you off on your measurement. Otherwise, same size, same depth on the buckets. Difference, yellow bucket, a little bit wider across the opening right here, just by a couple of millimeters. But once again, 580 bucket is wider across the front from side to side. So there we go. Here's a look at the bucket. I do like it. It does match the excavator. It does have better cutting teeth. We do have a little hook on the back so we can hook onto this and use it for lifting and whatever on else. So that's pretty cool that it has that on there. We'll probably end up putting this on the 580. All right, which bucket holds more between all of our buckets here? We've got the 1550 bucket, optional 580 bucket, which also fits on the 1550 FYI, and our 580 bucket. We've got a scale out here, a ratio right cup, and I've got a bucket of sand down yonder, some fine beach sand. We got a nice level bucket of sand right here. This is the 550 bucket. A little bit of dust coming off of it. <laughs> Dusty. We are at 267.6 grams. 267.6 grams for the little bucket. 267.6 grams. So there we go on our 1550 bucket. So 
Scales back to zero. We'll go with our upgraded yellow bucket. Nice full bucket, yes, agreed. Three ninety nine point one. Three hundred ninety nine point one grams. Three nine nine point one for the yellow bucket. Scale back to zero. Five eighty bucket. Shaking it around, making sure it's nice and level. Nice level bucket. Agreed. Three fifty three point five. Three fifty three point five. So there we have it, boys and girls. Yellow bucket is larger than the 580 bucket as far as which one can hold more material. So the 580 bucket's a little bit wider from left to right. Yellow one, a little bit wider up and down on its entrance. Yes, we can put the yellow bucket inside the 580 bucket. But as we see in here, Yellow bucket still holds more material. 399.1 grams versus 353.5 grams. So, yep, yellow bucket is slightly bigger. Ever so slightly. All right, looking at the ripper claw, ripper fork, ripper finger. Not too shabby, all in all. Definitely seems very solid for what it is. Bolted together. Couple individual pieces all sandwiched there. Once again, a little issue with the welds along the side here because they just kind of tack welded the gussets in place and uh, no full beads. I know it's thin metal, so it's hard to do a full bead on it, but it'd be nicer if they had a full bead coming across in between all those joints just to tie things together a little bit better. We do have it welded pretty good here on the inside, but uh, still. I wish they had it tied together just a wee bit better. All in all, though, not too shabby. Pretty happy with that. Overall length, we're looking at um, roughly two and a half inches from end to end there. A little right around 64, 63, something millimeters there. So will give you a rough idea on that. Not too bad, all in all, for the ripper fork, ripper attachment. Taking a look at our quick disconnect attachment, the LEDL. Number one complaint right off the bat, <laughs> that it's red. Uh, yeah, I knew that when I purchased it, but uh, it would be cooler if the manufacturer painted this yellow or even black. Uh, it would contrast with the excavator a little bit better than red. Red just kind of stands out like a sore thumb, so uh, not too happy about the red, but what can you do? You can always repaint it. 3D printed plastic, it appears right here and here. And how this works exactly, there's a little electric motor in here, and there's a screw drive over on this side. And it basically just worm gears one of these panels up or down. This would sit on your excavator, like this, bolted onto your excavator. Hook it up like that, and then bring this lower part down, just like so. And then activate the switch, and this would power down and uh, push this little plastic sleeve over top of that screw and lock everything in place. So let's go ahead here and get this quick disconnect fastened and see how all of this works. All right, so we got it plugged in. Controller hitting the lower button. That's moving it out. There's a little screw right there, and that just pushed this whole lower half out. So you can see it with this other little guide screw on the side when it's moving up and down. 
So that's a good indicator if you're looking at it on the machine, how far it's traveled by their little guide screw there in the open slot. Because of whether or not it's open or closed. Looks like that's threaded into this plastic block. And that's what is uh, locking your bucket in place. Uh, 3D printed plastic. Mm. Not too sure how strong that's going to be. I uh, might end up breaking that. Who knows? We'll see here. Everything did come with its own hardware. Ripper fork came with its own screws. Bucket came with its own screws. Same thing with this. It also came with its own screws as well for setting everything in place. So we'll go ahead here and get this thing locked in place. Pretty simple to do. Just running the screw through, making sure that you have it going in the right direction with our little fingers here facing up and our adjustable jaw on the bottom. Installing the nut on the back half using a cross wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. Just snugging this down, don't need to go crazy. We got a lock nut on the back edge. So just making sure that it's snug and not going anywhere. Metal on metal, you're basically connecting up like this so you don't need to go too nuts just make sure that the lock nuts making contact all right upper portion pretty simple to do just bringing it up and connecting it in place running our screw through and calling it good putting a lock nut on the back after that Just like that, we have her all connected up. Pretty easy to do. Once again, ugly wire <laughs> being plugged in up into our main boom. Checking our attachments to see how everything fits in place. Ripper fork fits on there nicely. Everything jives, everything lines up. Take a look at our little slider here to make sure that that is going in the right direction. And it is, there we go. We have our ripper fork locked in place on the arm. So that's pretty cool. Quick disconnect does work pretty good. Unlatching it. Upper button unlocks it. Lower button locks it. Nice quick disconnect. We have it all locked in. Not really losing too much curl out of it from what I can see here. Having our attachment on here, we've brought our bucket out this way a little bit. Just because of our attachment. <laughs> so, a little bit closer to the excavator. So you have to be careful when you're digging uh, that you don't grab a hold of your tracks in the process with that. In turn, that should give us more reach out as well as more reach down for digging and scooping and whatnot. We should be getting about another half inch, uh, whatever our distance is from here to here. Of depth out of this and a little bit more reach out of that and there we are full curl booms all the way up in the air so that's as far up as we can go that's as far back as we can go with our curl uh, not the end of the world we still have a nice full bucket of dirt wish it would go up a little bit higher uh, but that's what the excavator itself has nothing to do with the bucket if we did have our bucket sitting right here on our stock mounting location we would be up about a quarter of an inch higher just because we're losing a little bit of height right here so we are losing some height with this. So a little bit of drawback. Can't quite get it up as high in the air. But we are getting more depth out of it and more reach out of it. And it's a quick, easy disconnect of the attachments. I'm locking everything. Fuck it off. Okay. Let's try our timber grabber. Let's just see if this is going to fit on here. Uh, not exactly a direct fit here. Our screw holes are just a wee bit off down there. Not exactly a direct fit. 
Uh, this is just a little bit low. Our lower hole is just a little bit low. Almost need to move it up slightly to get that to slide in there. I'm just going to see if I can kind of hold it in place and cross my fingers and see if it'll lock. Moving our adjuster lever down. All right, so we do have it locked in there. It's somewhat secure. Whether or not it's going to work or not is another man's guess. Well, there we are already all the way open. Uh, once again, nothing to retract this back. It needs a spring on here to retract this. I've already rigged this up for my 1550 excavator and drilled a hole in the end of it here with a spring that goes up to the main arm uh, to hold this arm back. Let's see if this will close. Not going to work. Timber grabber needs to make contact with the arm in order to close. Having this in place, we are losing that gap. So can't use the timber grabber with the quick disconnect. So that's kind of a bummer. Can't use it just because once again, this part of the timber grabber needs to come in contact with the arm in order to close this up. This is the only part that's moving. This part hits the arm, which stops it. That closes it up. Jackhammer. And let's just see if this is going to hang on here. Might have a little issue on the inside. Just looking at it right now, right off the bat. Um, where this screw is sitting for our quick connect. And where our wires are sitting right here. Uh, might cause a little wire damage issue using these two in conjunction. But let's just see if we can fit it on there. Just for craps and giggles. Just because we need to know. Alright, we got it fit on there. At least up at the top there. Bottom. I'm not too sure if that's going to clamp in or not. Let's uh, hold it in place and see if we can get the clamp. I'm not, I don't think it's going in quite far enough. I think we're kind of catching on the framework here. Alright, so we're latched in place. And nope. Not grabbing a hold of it. Uh, catching our framework here on the outside edge. So not dropping in far enough. Might have to come in here and grind away some of this material right here. And then we might be able to get it to fit. Can't come in far enough to make connection. And with our wires and everything else right here for our, our quick disconnect, I don't think we're going to be able to bring it in close enough. So, at the moment, from what I can see, our jackhammer or drill will not work with the quick disconnect. So, so far, timber grabber doesn't work with it, jackhammer slash drill won't work with it. Let's take a look at our stock 580 bucket and see if we can use that with our quick disconnect as well. I'm pretty sure that we're not going to be able to do that because even on Extreme's website, they tell you right then and there, the version 4 580 excavator, the bucket needs to be modified in order to use it with this quick disconnect. I already know that. I did read that on their site. And this is a V4 excavator, so the bucket will need to get modded, uh, apparently, if we want to use it on this. But let's put some hardware on it, just for craps and giggles, just for the sake of argument, and uh, see if it'll work or not. Uh, yeah, not going to work with the 580 bucket. Screw hole is up just a little bit too high on this one. Our lower hole is uh, up too high. It needs to be brought down a little bit in order to fit into the locking groove down here in the bottom. Up just a wee bit too high to fit in there. The 580 bucket won't work with our quick disconnect unless we do some modifications to it. So there we go. There's a quick look at our quick disconnect attachment for the bucket, how to install it on your excavator, what it will work with and what it won't work with as far as what we have here. Uh, apparently, from what I can see, it'll work with all of the yellow stuff. So it works with the yellow bucket, works with the yellow ripper fork, works with the larger yellow grading bucket, and works with probably the narrower uh, trenching bucket. So if you intend on using all of the yellow attachments for your excavator, then the quick disconnect will work perfect for all that stuff. Um, pros and cons. Pros. Easy to hook up and disconnect. Pros, works with all the yellow stuff. Pros, you can dig a little bit deeper. You can reach out just a little bit further. Cons, 
Can't bring it up quite as high just because we're losing a little bit of height. Can't use our factory bucket unless we modify it. Won't work with the jackhammer unless you do some serious modifications down here and grind out some material. Still might not work just because of where the wires are right here. Won't work with the timber grabber. Once again, just because the back half of the timber grabber needs to come in contact with the arm in order to close properly. So if you want the timber grabber to work with this, you're probably going to have to drill some holes in the back of your timber grabber and mount a block or a cushion up in here so you have something to come into contact with the arm when you start to close this down. But as it is right now, no, you can't use that with this. So limited uses for the quick disconnect. So that's going to do it, everyone. Very much appreciated for you all sticking around and watching the video. As always, questions and comments are always welcome. And we'll see you all on the next one. Thanks again.